Hello, this is Jeff Roth from G4 Geomatic Resources in Houston. Today, we're going to go over the Captivate Quick Grid Orientate to Line application used for an RTK unit. And this allows to orientate to a local grid in the field. And in this case, we're going to use it to streamline and make it more efficient to collect topo data. I'm going to quickly go over the auto record points in GPS as well. So, what we're going to do is uh, when we go over this a quick grid, when we orientate to a line, we can pick two points and orientate. And we'll call the, um, the starting point zero, 00 to create a local grid. And then as we move on up the down line to, to, for a topo, and you can see our north and eastern would be our station offset. So imagine we have a scenario here where we had an open field, and the easiest way to collect data was to walk up and down or drive a ATV. We can click a point down here, call it zero, 00, walk down the fence line to find a local north, and then we'll view the north and east end and that will guide us along this field to grid it and topo efficiently. Okay, we have a Captivate data collector hooked up to a GS18. We're dialed into the network. I've got the fix, tilts on, and we're pumping data with 25 satellites. We created this brand new job called Quick Grid GS18. And we're now gonna use a Quick Grid application. If I come in here, and we're gonna orientate to line, and we take two shots to define the north, just like on the picture, the easiest way for us to walk and topo this field. So we hit the OK button. I'll come in here, and it needs a point number. So we'll call that point number one. And I'll keep the northern zero, eastern zero, and elevation at 100. And we're not going to use the geo to model. We'll hit OK. And it says right point number. So we'll shoot that in. Hit the measure button. And we're going to hit the store button. Okay. Stored. So the first point stored, uh, and we're now going to walk to the second point, and the second point is going to define our north or orientation to e to for the easiest way to walk the field. So we'll walk on up, using tilt, call that point number three, hit the measure button, and we're just going to hit store. Stored. And now there's our rotation from north, so we'll come in here and call the projection what we want, so we'll call it Cravens. Hit enter and store and hit yes. And now we've we've set up our quick grid. So if I come in here to my current position, we're now on that local grid and our northern eastern is our station offset on that line. And the next video will go over how to do the auto record. Okay, so we'll go down to the next video and now we're gonna set the auto record. Uh, so once again, in this case, we're walking with our GPS receiver or we could strap it on a four wheeler. Okay, now we have the quick grid established. If I go into my job, properties, coordinate system, we now have the Craven's quick grid as a, as a one step. So we'll store that. Once again, if I hit my current position, we're now in that local system. It's zero, zero, right at the origin of our local grid. So what we're gonna do now is set up auto record. And in this case, we're gonna walk manually we're using the tilt. Uh, we could mount this on a four wheeler or a truck. So if we go to the measure screen, um, what's important if I hit function, settings and we come over to automatically recorded points we'll check that box that will open up that screen to allow us to do auto record we can do it by distance or distance and height if you had like a bayou and you want to do a height change so right now i'm going to do it every 20 feet and i could change that to whatever spacing that i wanted so let's say we want to do it every 10 feet okay and we have a cq and what's going to hit the start key to, to activate it content f3 I've got this set up because I want to see the north and east end and the code, okay? And that way, when I hit OK and hit OK here, I'll tab over, and the last tab is for the auto record. So say, what point number do you want to start recording data at? So we'll call it 100. There's our north and east end. That's showing us our station offset. And the code, I could type in natural ground. So I'll back up or type in NG. Now code everything natural ground. There's our quality right there. So we'll hit start and we'll start collecting data. And as we're walking up, you see our northern east increases. That's how far down the line we are. And when we reach the end of the field, um, we'll kick over and then the eastern will be offset to that line. So let's say we want to do a 10 foot offset. After we walk on up, it's collecting data. And what we'll do now is we'll zoom in and we should see the data being collected. So I should have zoomed in here earlier. And now the points are being
and stored. And it's going to go over to a 10 foot offset. So see the Easton's now increasing. And as he's moving, um, and we'll see here on the screen, we'll start collecting points. And as he starts moving on down, every 10 feet, we'll take a shot. Okay. Okay, and you can see we collected the data and we can keep on walking up and down and uh, the northern eastern that'll tell us how far up we are from our starting point and the eastern would be our offset point. Okay, and uh, if we went on the other side of the line, that eastern would be negative. If we want to do a 10 foot offset negative. Once again, uh, we talked about we could orientate like to a fence and we could strap the GS18 to a uh, four-wheeler and drive that and then once again monitor that northern eastern auto record um that's the nice thing about the tilt is once you know walk that 35 feet 10 meters is initialized um, we want to measure to the arp so if we had we had the elevation in this case on a survey pole um and we can walk it uh, if you had it on the atv just measure the arp and, and measure that height to the bottom of the gs18 type it in and as you drive up and down the elevation will be relative uh, to your four-wheeler, okay? So some guys use a four-wheeler to dramatically increase their efficiency of picking up a, a, a large topo of a field. Okay, we have our job here. I can click on it, view and edit data, we'll show the data. And in the point list, see they're in the local, that local grid that we defined. Uh, 3D viewer, once again, will show that little grid that we picked up. I can export this to my local coordinates that I defined if I wanted to. Oops. So we click on here, hit export data, hit ASCII, and we can pick USB. And then as there's a quick grid, hit OK. I'll export all that data. Now, another way that we can do it is if I wanted to convert this back to state plane, if I just use this to generate a local coordinate system, but one in state plane, I can click on here, go to properties, and change my coordinate system back up in this case, we want Texas South Central Geoid 18. Hit OK. And when I hit store here, all the coordinates will now be transformed into um, my 13 million, 3 million, my local transformation. So that's the beauty of, of Captivate. And if I, if I need them in state plane, I can now say, right, export data, ASCII, USB, and I'll probably want to put in here. Uh, the job is Quick Grid, Texas South Central, Geoid 18. Okay, so I'll put that metadata on there, hit OK, and that will export that. So I just want to show you how quickly we can we can use that local uh, Quick Grid to easily collect the data, and then we can convert it back to state plane to export. Okay, great. And once again, this job can be transferred transferred to USB, uh, the DBX and pulled into infinity. Uh, today is June 7th, so yesterday was D-Day, the 80th anniversary. Uh, took a trip a few years ago back to Pointe de Hoc in Normandy. Just a couple of pictures, it's just really impressive to go see that site and pay tribute to all the guys uh, who died on the beach to allow us to enjoy and uh, enjoy a day on the beach, okay? So just a shout out to all the veterans out there, appreciate all your sacrifice. And once again, here's our team at G4. If you have any questions, just feel free to reach out to us, uh, Jeff and John and Ronald in service. And uh, thanks again for watching. Hope you found it helpful.